reading through the Bible in a year, July 2nd, Joshua chapter 4, Psalm 129 through 131, Isaiah 64, and Matthew chapter 12. When all the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, Yahweh said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here, from the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men from the people of Israel, whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe, and Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of Yahweh, your God, into the midst of the Jordan, and take up each of you a stone upon his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the uh, Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. And the people of Israel did just as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, just as Yahweh told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to the place where they lodged and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the, where the, feet of the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood, and there they are to this day. For the priests bearing the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that Yahweh commanded Joshua to tell the people. According to all that Moses had commanded Joshua, the people passed over in haste. And when all the people had finished passing over, the ark of Yahweh and the priests passed over before the people. The sons of Reuben, the sons of Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the people of Israel as Moses had told them. About 40,000 ready for war passed over before Yahweh uh, for right before Yahweh for battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day Yahweh exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they stood in awe of him, just as they had stood in awe of Moses all the days of his life. And Yahweh said to Joshua, "Command the priests bearing the ark of the testimony to come up out of the Jordan." So Joshua commanded the priests, Come up out of the Jordan. When the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh came up from the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the uh, priests' feet were lifted up on a dry ground, the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all its banks as before. The people uh, came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border, on the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones, which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, What do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know, Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For Yahweh your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as Yahweh your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord, the hand of Yahweh, is mighty, that you may fear Yahweh, your God, forever. Now Psalms 129 through 131. Greatly have they afflicted me from my youth, Let Israel now say, Greatly have they afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back, they made long their furrows. Yahweh is righteous, he has cut the cords of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be put to shame and turned backward. Let them be like the grass on the housetops, which withers before it grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his hand, which... Uh, Let them be like the grass on the housetops, which withers before it grows up. I already said that. Nor the binder of sheaves his arms. Nor those who pass by say, The blessing of Yahweh be upon you. We bless you, 
in the name of Yahweh. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Yahweh. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Yahweh, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for Yahweh. My soul waits. And in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in Yahweh. For with Yahweh there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. He will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Psalm 131 O Yahweh, my heart is not lifted up, my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, hope in Yahweh, from this time forth and forevermore. Now Isaiah 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one is heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, whose acts, rather, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him, who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you are angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been for a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Yahweh, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Yahweh, and remember not iniquity forever. But behold, please look, we are all your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation. Our holy and beautiful house, where our fathers praised you, has been burned by fire. And all our present, uh, pleasant places have become ruins. Will you restrain yourself at these things, O Yahweh? Will you keep silent and afflict us so terribly? Concluding today in Matthew chapter 12. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat but when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. And he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. He went on from there and entered their synagogue. And a man was there with a, a withered hand. And they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So that they might accuse him. And he said to them, which one of you who has a sheep, if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? 
of how much more value is the man or is a man than the sheep. So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out and it was restored, healthy like the other. But the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there. And many followed him, and he healed them all, and ordered them not to make him known. We talked about this before. It's because if everybody knows about Jesus and what he's doing, then uh, the crowds will get larger and larger, and it'll be harder for him to do things, especially in smaller towns. Continuing on. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom I souls well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice to victory. In his name the Gentiles will hope. Then a a demon-oppressed man, who was blind and mute, was brought to him, and he healed him. So the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Can can this be the son of David? Remember, that's a messianic title. But all the Pharisees, when they heard it, said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is, is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, well, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? If I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, well, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, lest he first binds that strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and every blasphemy will be forgiven people, but blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks." A good person, out of his good treasure, brings forth good. And an evil person, out of his evil treasure, brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word that they speak. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they have repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. When the uh, unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless place seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, "Ah, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So it will be with this evil generation. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and his brothers stood outside, asking to speak to him. 
But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. And that is all of the notes to here. That's all the reading for today. Um, Yeah, it's been a long day, but I'm glad we got through this reading. It's a great reading, Um, and I'm always glad to see it. So, God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.